Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast of Bend County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 128. This is the Friday, January 20th, 2023 edition of Library Connections. So this week I'm going to be out of the office on Thursday and Friday. And as you may know, the New York Times bestseller lists come out on Thursday. So I don't have time this week to actually do the top five fiction and nonfiction bestsellers the way I usually do. So instead, I'm going to actually show you how to access them yourself because they are available for free through the New York Times website. They are not behind a paywall. Most of the rest of the content on the site is, but the bestsellers are not. So you open the web browser of your choice and type in nytimes.com, which will take you to the New York Times website. And then if you look closely under the title, the New York Times, between the K and the T almost, you see books. So you click or tap on that. And then when that comes up, again, you have to look closely at first because it's small. But underneath it says arts, books, book review, but we want bestsellers, which is the second thing, which is kind of under the K and S of the books. So once we've done that, here we are. New York Times bestseller lists for fiction and nonfiction have two lists, actually. There's combined print and ebook fiction. And then if you scroll down past the fiction and nonfiction, you'll find just hardcover lists for just the bestsellers in print, basically, as compared to ebooks. So any one of these lists, you can click or tap on the title, combined print and ebook nonfiction, for example, and the list will come up. And you can just peruse to your heart's content. In addition to fiction and nonfiction in both ebook combination and hardcover and just plain hardcover, there also is a list for paperback trade fiction down here. And below that, paperback nonfiction. These are all lists that are free for you to access. And if you keep going, you get advice, how to, and miscellaneous, which is yeah, a lot of they're nonfiction books, but they're interesting. And then if we keep going, if you have kids in your household, children's middle grade hardcover, children's picture books, and children's series books, and eventually you get to the young adult titles. So if you have young adults in your household, there are lists for the young adults as well. And again, you just click or tap on the title, in this case, young adult hardcover, and there's the list. So that, in a nutshell, is how you do it. Our first recommended read for this week is the new Preston and Child thriller, The Cabinet of Dr. Lang. FBI Special Agent Pendergast and Constance Green are back, but on different timelines. Catherine has found her way to late 1800s New York, where she's intent on putting an end to events that would lead to the deaths of her sister and brother and also to Dr. Enoch Ling, the serial killer who first terrified readers in the author's The Cabinet of Curiosities. In the present day, Pendergast frets about reuniting with her. And on a reader's note, this is the 21st book in this series, and it really is a book that is best read if you've read the other books in the series. So if you'd like to start reading from the beginning, and it is a thrilling series, check out book one, which is called The Relic. Our second recommended read for this week is the new Allie Hazelwood book, Loathe to Love You. From the New York Times bestselling author of The Love Hypothesis comes a collection of steamy, stemish novellas featuring a trio of engineers and their loves and loathing. The first story is called Under One Roof and tells the tale of an environmental engineer who discovers that scientists should never cohabitate 
when she finds herself stuck with a roommate from hell, a detestable big oil lawyer who won't leave the thermostat alone. The second story is called Stuck With You and features a civil engineer and her nemesis who take their rivalry and love to the next level when they get stuck in a New York elevator. And the third story is called Below Zero. It features the tale of a NASA aerospace engineer whose frozen heart melts as she lies injured and stranded at a remote Arctic research station and the only person willing to undertake the dangerous rescue mission is, of course, her longtime rival. So if you like humor with engineering romance, check out this collection. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation, I'm going to recommend the first book, an audiobook, in a series by Blake Pierce. It's called Never Run. The audio is read by Melissa Durbin. May Moore, 29, is an average Midwestern woman and a deputy sheriff. May has always lived in the shadow of her older, brilliant FBI sister. Yet the sisters are united by the cold case of their missing younger sister. And when an eerily similar serial killer strikes in May's quiet Minnesota town, it's May's turn to prove herself, to outshine her sister and the FBI. In this action-packed thriller, she's going to outwit and hunt down a diabolical killer before he strikes again. May wastes no time in investigating, but things go quickly south when her older sister, the aforementioned accomplished FBI agent, is called in by local authorities to help. Making matters worse, the case brings up dark memories and buried secrets from her family's history, and neither May nor her sister are ready to confront the past. But with a ticking clock, May and her sister will have to put aside old grievances to find this killer and save the next victim. And they will have to be careful not to assume that this is the same killer from their past. But is he? A page-turning and harrowing crime thriller featuring a brilliant and tortured deputy sheriff Never Run is a riveting mystery packed with non-stop action, suspense, jaw-dropping twists, and driven by a breakneck pace that will keep you flipping pages late into the night. And as I mentioned, this is the first book in the May Moore mystery series. So if you dig this one, there's more to read and listen to. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the new Rachel Hawkins novel, The Villa. The audio is read by Julia Whalen. Friendship and professional jealousy fuel this nail biter from bestseller Hawkins. As children, Chess Chandler and Emily Sheridan were inseparable, but they grew apart as adults. Chess became a popular self-help guru with books, videos, and TED Talks. While Emily found moderate success writing an amateur sleuth mystery series. Chess's star and wealth continue to rise as Emily deals with the divorce conflict over her royalties, health problems, and writer's block. Then Chess suggests a hard reset to their friendship, with a six-week stay at Villa Estis outside Orvito, Italy. Excuse the pronunciation there, I'm sure that's not quite spot on, but back to the villa. Emily is reluctant to go on the trip until she learns the villa was rented in the summer of 74 by rock star Noel Gordon. The villa became known as the Murder House after a guest of Noel's, an unknown musician, was murdered there that summer. 
The villa and its past, chronicled in a hidden diary, energizes Emily, who begins to write again. Starting with the provocative first sentence, houses remember. But Chess is stymied, unable to work until she finds Emily's rough draft. Intense characters complement the brisk plot, which shifts smoothly between the present and 1974. Hawkins consistently entertains. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers monthly and weekly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast Bend County Library's YouTube page. Moving on to our next section, next week at the Library, we'll take a brief look at the events and activities hosted by the Library on-site and off for the week ahead of us. And this time around, that's the week of January 23rd through the 27th, 2023. This information can also be found online. Simply visit the library's website, found at ssclibrary.org, and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. Registration is required for programs, unless otherwise specified, or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which case, of course, simply help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's calendar of events online by calling the library at area code 607-936-3713 or by just plain dropping by the library. Moving on to the actual programs and activities on Monday, January 23rd, we have no programs or activities, so happy reading. On Tuesday, January 24th, we have a whole host of programs in library land, kicking things off with coffee, tea, and English vocabulary from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. This is part of the series for adult learners of English. This program is hybrid, so it's held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. From 10 to 10.30 a.m., we've got Storytime with Miss Sue, a program for kids being held in the children's department at the library. And then from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., there's Coffee, Tea, and English Conversation, another hybrid program. And then from 1 to 3 p.m., we have the Weekly Adult Scrabble, which will be held in the library's reading room. Moving on to our late afternoon program on Tuesday, January 24th, we've got the weekly GATLAS, which stands for Gay at the Library After School. This program runs from 3 to 4.30 p.m. GATLAS is a partnership program co-hosted by the Library and Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. Your host for the program is Carmen Greco of Planned Parenthood of Greater New York, and this program offers a safe space for teens to hang out and talk about anything going on in their lives in a quiet and relaxed setting. Moving on to Wednesday, January 25th, we have a whole host of programs again. It's our busiest program day of the week. The first program of the day is Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime, which runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. and is held in the Children's Department at the Library. Then from 12.10 to 1 p.m., it's Book Sandwiched In, Fight Night by Miriam Toes, presented by Randy Hewitt. This is a hybrid program being held both in person at the First Congregational Church, that's on West Pulteney Street in Corning, and via Zoom. You can also get the Zoom link through the Calendar of Events link on the library's homepage. Then from 1 to 3 p.m. on Wednesday, January 25th, we've got the weekly Meijong session, which is held in the library's reading room from 1 to 3 p.m. Moving on to our late afternoon programs, we've got ATLAS from 3 to 4.30 p.m. ATLAS stands for At the Library After School, and this is a program where kids get together and create something. It's something different each week. It's always a surprise. And you don't have to register, 
just show up. Then from 6 to 8 p.m., we have the weekly Corning Adult Writers Group. This is a hybrid program being held both in person at the library and via Zoom. There's the dot. On Thursday, January 26, we've got two programs at the library. Well, I should say hosted by the library because the first program is for homeschoolers. It's the Kids Explore Homeschool Group, and it's an ice skating program. The program is held in Civic Center Plaza at the ice rink. And from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., homeschoolers can skate for a discounted admission of only $2. You can bring your own skates or rent a pair for only a dollar. This program is a partnership program between the library and the City of Corning Parks and Recreation Department. And then from 10 to 11.30 a.m., we have Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club. The location is hybrid, so it's being held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. Moving on to Friday the 27th, and I can't believe how fast the month is going, but it is. We have three programs to bring to your attention, and the first two are full. So you might think, well, why are you telling me about this? Well, I'm telling you about it because, A, if you've already registered for it, this can just be a reminder. And B, if you haven't registered for it, but you've got young people in your household, it might be a series that you want to register for the next time it's offered. So that's the lowdown on that. So having said that, without further ado, from 10 to 11 a.m., we have a full event, but it's the fourth Artful Story Time. This is a session of stories followed by arts and crafts for kids ages three through six years of age. Then from noon to 1 p.m., it's the fourth session of Artsy Kids, which is a program that focuses on art history and painting and is designed for kids ages 7 through 12. Our head honcho of the Children's Department, Sue McConnell, is the contact for both programs. And then from 1 to about 1.20 p.m. is the debut of the new episode of Library Connections, a weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast, which you can access through Facebook, and YouTube, and the week after, through the Tech Talk blog. And here briefly are our library program's contacts. Should you have any questions about any of the library programs, let us know. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.